so now let's create a class, a dog class. And our dog class, since dogs are animals, we'll extend that. We'll extend the animal class. And the way we do that is we say public animal. Now you can also extend a class in C++ using the private or protected visibility modifiers. And there are some considerations that go into which you pick. We may go over that later, but for now, we'll just use public. And we'll have a constructor with a default name of, we'll call, we'll say good boy. And we actually don't need to set the name in this constructor because the animal constructor does that. So we can call the animal constructor with S as a parameter like this. And that's really all the initialization we need to do. And that needs to be public. And we'll have speak and move functions, but let's not uh, override eat. So here we'll update this to say dog. And the dog will say woof. And the dog will say I'm running. That concludes our class. Let's create some dog variables. First, we'll create an object variable D, a dog pointer, D pointer, and a dog reference deref and we'll initialize that to d then let's scroll down further and this code actually is going to be pretty similar to what we're going to want for our dog object so i'll just copy and paste it and i can go through and so i'll change the names there and then I can just change these A's to D to reference the dog variable instead of the animal variables that we had before. So we'll instantiate a new dog. We'll call the dog Felix. And let's compile this and see what happens. So you can see we have our, our dog stuff. And for the methods that have the same name, we call the dog method. And we didn't implement the eat method. So we get the dogs, or we get the animals eat method. So here we have the pointer. That's a different dog. This one's the one called Felix. And it looks like we didn't give yeah, so we left the other dog and gave it a default name. Kind of feel that that's not good. So let's uh, let's go ahead and initialize this. We'll call it. We'll call this dog. Spot. So let's run this again. And how did I manage to introduce an error? There. Let's see. Line thirty-three. I left off my parentheses. So now I can compile and I can run dog object, dog pointer, and the dog reference to this dog object up here. So notice that's the same. So we have two objects that we've instantiated, one as a variable, one as a pointer, or as a heap object. So let's create a cat class I think what we'll do is let's make the cat the cat doesn't want to do anything so we'll give it a default value for the name of kitty 
and we'll call the animal constructor and we're not going to implement any other methods in this class. So it's a pretty, pretty empty class and we'll see later how, I mean, obviously that's probably not good to have a empty class that doesn't do anything that just has a different name, but I mean, there's reasons you would do that, but we probably want our cat to do a little bit more. I copied and pasted, but I think this might be easier just to do from scratch. So let's have a cat eek, except we need to call it C. So we'll call that cat eek and we'll have a cat pointer and we'll have a cat reference. And just like we did with our dog, we'll copy the dog stuff. change dog to cat and change our variable names to C because those are all cats. And it looks like I have a slight bug, which I didn't catch earlier. That should be D. I don't think that made a difference in that particular case, but I'll fix it here. So let's save this and we'll run it. What's very easy to do is your classes are by default private or your class members. So I need to specify that the constructor is public so that I can actually instantiate that object. Even just a simple rename can sometimes be difficult. And this should work. Yeah, there we go. And here's our cat. And notice the cat. I also need to give the cat a new name, I guess. We'll call the cat Mittens. Okay, so you can see all of our cat results are here, but notice it's all calling the animal functions because we didn't implement any of these in the cat method. So we'll talk about next how to force some of these changes and then we'll get into virtual methods and we'll do that in the next video.